I'm Claire Petrich and I just want to say welcome to my office right now. We're, you're down here on the Tacoma Tide Flats and we're at Petrich Marine Dock and I just wanted to let you know a little bit about me and what goes on here. Um, born in Tacoma and born into a family that is a fishing family and a boat building family. So I've been running this property for a number of years where we have a lot of tenants making things from boats to cars to parts for Boeing and this is the site of a former shipyard. So maritime things have always been important to me and that led to my running for the Port Commission over 20 years ago. So I've been serving as an elected official on the commission of the Port of Tacoma and have enjoyed that thoroughly. That's been a great aspect of uh, what a public service and of the economic development work that's important for the Port of Tacoma and the community here. So come on in to my office and you can look around and just see some of the souvenirs from a long time ago and current times. So welcome. inside the office and I, I was reflecting on um, how is it that we do the things that we do in life sometimes you know it's never for me it's never been quite expected or there's never been a clear trajectory of starting in one particular job and leading to another but in a way what surprised me about my own life is how it has led back to my ancestors and my origins my grandfather was born in Croatia, came here as a boy. He was nine years old when he came to Tacoma and became a fisherman and a boat builder. So always as I was a kid growing up, I was going out on boats, learning how to row, learning how to run boats, and then also um, participating in coming into the shipyard and seeing, seeing boats being built all the time. Uh, my dad told stories when I was a kid of his experience aboard this vessel that's right here. It's called the Dollar Line. And um, when he was about 17 years old, he boarded this ship and went around the world to board this ship as a sailor, a seaman, and then came back to Tacoma and got involved in the family business where they were building boats. One year in the 30s, after the Depression, uh, Western Boat in Tacoma built a boat that they wanted to take back to Gloucester, Massachusetts, because they thought they might be able to get some, get some business from going to Massachusetts. So this is a photograph of my dad, who was the skipper of the Western Explorer, the boat that Western Boat took to Gloucester. And uh, that was a pretty exciting trip. There were thousands of people in Tacoma that went down to Point Defiance and saw the Western Explorer as it left to go through the Panama Canal, and they had a radio broadcaster on board the ship, which was kind of a big deal at that time because people weren't doing ship to shore recording and then having it play on the radio so that people in Tacoma could hear the stories of the Western Explorer as it went down the coast from California through the Panama Canal, around Florida, and up the east coast of the United States until they finally were greeted by the mayor and lots of people in Gloucester who were very excited to see the designs of the fishing boats from the West Coast. So this is my dad. These are the stories he used to tell about going to China, everything that he saw when he was a young man aboard the ships. And I think they inspired me to want to see the world and be part of the world and also keep the maritime heritage going. to have you here at the port today. Welcome to the Port of Tacoma. If you're a visitor here for the first time, one of the things I'd like to show to you is the tower that's just over here. Um, families, people who are visiting go 
up to the top of the tower, you have a great view of ships that might be coming into this, the Sitcom Waterway, which is one of the earliest parts when the Port of Tacoma was first founded 100 years ago. So let me show you what's going on here now. Uh, you can see the bow of a Matson ship, and it is tied up right close to our administrative building. The waterway, this waterway, can serve several ships. You see right out, so you see cranes. You see these cranes right here for the OCT terminal. And over beyond this waterway, into the next waterway, there's some very exciting things to see. This is uh, March 2018. And you see the four brand new, largest on the West Coast cranes that arrived last week in Tacoma and will be part of the creation of Terminals 3 and 4 which serve our Japanese customers in the ocean network. So, standing right here in the parking lot of the Port of Tacoma admin building, Sikram Waterway, you get a great sense of what trade is about. You see the containers that have goods in them and the goods that they're loaded with for export and import. And you basically see terminals and a port that's ready to serve the customer. We are at the port's administrative building. We're about to go inside. Um, you'll see the sign here that talks about the clean truck office. The port's been working very, very hard on air emissions in the, in the tide flats and in the port operations. So we have a new clean truck program and a lot of folks are coming in here to get information. Come walk with me and we'll enter into the Port of Tacoma and to its administrative and headquarters building. You enter in, uh, commissioners are shown in pictures up above you. There's material for you to get, but if you're coming into the port and you need to know about the security, you'll get a pass and you come through these two towers right here into the administrative building. Oftentimes we have meetings here, people can meet here, or there are some great things that are going on for You. We have already chosen for you, so I hope that's okay. I don't know. What do we get? We got a waterside port tour. Oh, good. So go out on a boat for a few hours. Great. They had some cool ones. So your question about just, a, just noting a few entrepreneurial activities that, that I've enjoyed through the years. Um, I think that it's, it's funny, we tend to think of being an entrepreneur as being a business thing. And so my business entrepreneurial activities were the period of time that I actually had an import business and primarily went to Vietnam where I purchased garden items, everything from furniture to pottery, and sold them in a warehouse down on my property at, at Petridge Marine Dock. The name of the shop was Doc Mandu. We had some great things. I learned a lot about importing, about customs, about tariffs, and why we don't want them, um, and, and the challenges that it takes to run a, a retail business primarily and a small retail business in a local area. I liked it, I loved interacting with people, and yet it, when it was time to close the business, it was time to close the business. We had some challenges. Being in the Tide Flats was great until the 11th Street Bridge was closed and customers couldn't find us anymore. So we moved up to 6th Avenue and opened up a shop there. And that was fun. It was good, but it was it made it very different from being the kind of warehouse stores that we had enjoyed originally setting up. So that was Doc Mandu, and that was a great experience. 
and I think people should should have those experiences of importing and also of manufacturing here in the United States and exporting. Don't be afraid of doing business in the world because it's just doing business and it's all about relationships with people no matter where you are. So if you take that to another level, which, which is the idea of entrepreneurship being trying something new and trying something new in a governmental aspect, then I'd say that the creation and the development of the Northwest Seaport Alliance has been an experience that I will always treasure um, for years and years. I've been on the Port Commission since 1996 and for years the Port of Seattle and the Port of Tacoma competed with one another. When we began to look at what was happening in the industry, how it was changing, and how the competition between shipping lines was affecting uh, the, the building of the size of the ships, the alliances that were being formed by shipping companies, we had to look at what was happening in the Puget Sound area. And what was happening was that the Port of Seattle and the Port of Tacoma competing over getting these shipping lines to come and call it our ports were basically killing each other. Um, we had huge investments to make to meet the demands of our customers who needed larger terminals, larger cranes, uh, and more speed and, and productivity in our, in our ports. So we began to talk together, the Port of Seattle and the Port of Tacoma. It required approval by the Federal Maritime Commission to allow us to meet together. And we began by examining what was happening in the industry and trying to figure out if there were ways that we could cooperate and collaborate. We had been collaborating on political items, uh, things like the harbor maintenance tax, and trying to get that changed, but we'd never looked at doing business together. So after two, three years of conversations where we examined carefully what was happening in the industry and what we saw our future being, we started dealing with the real nitty gritty parts of governance and how the Alliance could actually work. The outcome, the determination of it is that because we are, we are elected from counties, we are five commissioners in Pierce County, five commissioners in King County, that if we wanted governance to work, we were gonna have to have it on an equal basis. So the managing members of the Northwest Seaport Alliance are the five members of the commissions from Seattle and Tacoma. We did the same thing with our assets and we've done the same thing with the way that we operate so that we put in the value of our assets as the terminals that we operate of, out of. Each of them are equally valued so that what makes up the Northwest Seaport Alliance is 50% Seattle, 50% Tacoma. Uh, investments that we have to make we're making 50% from each of the home ports. And then returns on those investments, losses or profits on it, are returned to each home port 50-50. So there's a third idea of entrepreneurial stuff, which, is, which is, is creating a community, I guess, or creating an event. And I'll tell you the story because it's one of those surprising things that happened. I happened to be um, in Taipei for a very short period of time and a newspaper was delivered to my door. There was a photograph on the front page of the Taipei News and it, and it, it showed the winners of a dragon boat race. Um, I cut that picture out because when I looked at it, I thought, my goodness, that looks like fun and I think people in Tacoma would like to do something like that. I'd never heard of dragon boat races before. So I cut out the picture from the paper and carried it around in my wallet for a number of years, knowing that somehow, some way, I was gonna be able to find some dragon boats to bring back to Tacoma. Um, there were a few false starts. There were some folks that, uh, in a Kiwanis club that considered sending us some boats, but then nothing happened. And, and uh, there was an attempt then for us to go to our sister city in Fuzhou and look for a boat builder who might be able to come to Tacoma and build boats. So in the process of raising some funds to do that, 
we actually met another entrepreneur who, who had a, um, a marina on Hood's Canal. And in his garage there, he had two dragon boats that he was anxious to see being used. So people in Tacoma were given these dragon boats, traditional, beautiful wooden dragon boats from, from China that happened to be here. And we had the opportunity to use them. So what did we do to use them? Well, we had a maritime fest going on and uh, I called up the city and I said, this, the port of Tacoma challenges you to a dragon boat race. And the city manager said to me, oh, we'll beat you. I've got firemen and policemen. We can win a race. I said, okay, you just wait. We're still challenging. So then I had to go to the port and say, the city's challenging us to beat them in a, in a dragon boat race. And so we got teams and we call, put out a call everywhere for people who might want to learn about dragon boating to come and play. And we had our first race, our first team, and it was a demonstration. And we kind of thought, well, who knows what will happen after this. What happened after that was that we were invited to participate in the dragon boat races in China. And that required us to basically really learn what we were doing and how to do it. So people got committed. Um, we had great help from the Puyallup tribe because they were involved in the canoe journey and they were, they were paddling often and helped us to, to learn how to paddle our dragon boats. We went to China and came back and people wanted to continue this. So dragon boating has now become a fixture on the waterway in Tacoma. And it's been probably close to 20 years now that thousands of people in Tacoma have had the opportunity to do dragon boating. So that's an entrepreneurial activity that came from a dream, uh, uh, sort of a magic moment and has affected lots of people's lives both from a health perspective, but also from the fun of competing, traveling, we've participated in races all over the world. And I think it's just been a great, a great experience. I'm delighted that it, it has happened and um, fun, really fun. Maybe that's the whole point of entrepreneurship. It's to enjoy what you're doing and make it fun no matter what. <laughs> Even when the going gets tough, <laughs> which it does. So just don't forget the fun. <laughs>